Thank you very much for very kind introduction to me, for me. Um, I'm very glad to be able to stand here to see all these uh, very enthusiastic and, and uh, future promising students. Uh, also, there are some faculty here. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the, the, when Professor Sasaki asked me to give a, a seminar uh, today, just about a month ago, then I said yes. See, I like to talk whatever I like to talk. Uh, so the, uh, today I'm not going to talk anything detailed in technology. Uh, in fact, I don't know any, any technology in deep, uh, in depth, uh, but uh, I like to talk something. I think it's useful for you. So that the, I very briefly cover uh, some t technological uh, issue. Because as you know, the, I, 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 I've been involved in the uh, upper part of the whole spectrum of uh, steel business. So, so we call it uh, chemical metallurgy or the iron making, steel making, that area. So probably the, my talk will be a little bit biased because of my uh, primary interest area. But I try to, to be as general as possible. Okay. Uh, Okay, when we this say the technology development, probably the, the we can, there are many ways to classify the technology development, but this is a, one of the ways. Um, facility limited, which means uh, if you have a better facility, you can produce uh, more of the products in better quality at the lower cost. So for instance, if I, if I uh, the, uh, see the, uh, the, the car racing, for instance, uh, the, you can easily say that which car will be running faster than the others. Because the facility, the, this must be running faster than the other, the other two. But in this case, the solution to this problem is, uh, oops, sorry. This is a solution. <laughs> um, probably, the, if you have money, sorry, if you have a money, you can solve the problem. Get the better facilities, and then you can produce more in high quali higher quality at the lower cost. Okay. But many of the uh, uh, underdeveloped uh, countries and then some developing countries, the, if I apply this one to steel tech, the steel industry, they usually in this uh, category. Okay? So the, when I was first joined the steel industry in Korea in 1970s, uh, the technology is all of the technology already embedded in the, in, the, in the facilities. When we get the better facility, the facility comes with its own technology. So we just run it, and then we get the products. So that's the, how to run, how to maintain the equipment. That's the best technology we, can, we could say. But, but there is another, another one, a knowledge-limited uh, uh, technology. That means everybody has the best equipment. The best, the, the, the similar kind of a car, but who drives faster? It doesn't. It it, it doesn't depend on the, the car itself. It depends on the driver. Okay. In this case, the solution is not the the facility. It's the human resources. How good you are. How good drive you. A driver you are. Okay. This is the, one of the, the two. The, uh, the ways of classifying the technology development. So the, the Korea is now in this area. So the, the, most of the steel companies in Korea have the, 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 the best equipments available in the market. But it doesn't mean that they can produce the best quality of steel. Okay? So they, they have to work hard 
uh, to get the most of uh, to make the most of uh, of the facilities. So now the there are patent uh, the there are also the uh, number of ways of uh, uh, the classifying the patterns of technology development. Uh, this is the one way. Suppose the the this is the size of the the experimental work. Suppose you have a this size of a uh, materials or the specimen uh, for research. Suppose uh, the outcome of your research is a very promising, then you can uh, go for further development. You make more of those uh, 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 the products, and then the eventually, if fully successful, you can go to the production, commercial production. So in the commercial production and the research, the size, size, or the amount of the work you do, the material, amount of material you, you deal with is about the same. But here you deal with only one piece of the, uh, the, the, the material, but here are many of them. Okay. But the, there is another one. This is the, the, the physical size when you do the research, but it's promising, and then you go for one step further for instance, a uh, pilot plant type of uh, uh, development. The scale is uh, much bigger, but the, for the commercial production, it's much, much bigger. So th these are two different uh, the type of uh, patterns for uh, technology development. Still falls on this category, okay. still. So that's why the, what, you, what you think you've, you've developed a very nice technology but the steel company is not very, very much interested in your technology because there, are, there is a very wide gap in between. So the, for patent one, when we say, the, when we contrast science against technology, then the, for patent one, the many times science and technology are, are overlapping with each other. So the, you can, sometimes you cannot distinguish whether it's science or technology. But for patent two, so science and technology sometimes widely separated. So the, scientifically, your work is very nice, promising, but technologically, you still have to uh, the long way to go. Okay. This is my view that the from a socio-economic point of view, the steel is the backbone material of the society. So when you go out there, and then you, you can look at uh, whatever you like to look, just imagine the, if, there is a, if there were no steel available, what shape of the society would look like. So the, it has to be backbone material. You don't see your backbone spine, but there is a backbone. And then technological point of view is an ever-evolving uh, material. I ran a 12 years old car. My car is a 12 years old. And then the, I don't know who runs uh, the very new car. Uh, suppose uh, the, you, you, you run a new car? Uh, you do. Okay, the, if you look at the, the car itself, you may say that, oh, this is a car body. Uh, if you peel off the, the paint, there must be steel in it. And then 12 years old car, and then the brand new car, steel is steel, but it's very different, okay? If you produce steel, 12 years old technology, and then try to sell it to the car maker, they wouldn't buy, okay? So it's gradually, you don't see it very much, but it's evolving. And then global environment for environment point of view, the, the iron or steel is most abundant available material in the nature, and then also the most recyclable uh, material. So it's in this way, in this point, in this regard, the steel is very environmentally friendly okay, material. Okay, now to some consideration of the steel, a future future of steel. 
not the steel product, it's the steel production process. Okay. If you look back, uh, uh, maybe 20, 30, 40 years uh, from now, the a blast furnace used to be quite small. The blast furnace is about 400 years old technology, is that right? For 400 years old technology. It's gradually developed, become bigger and bigger. But the, in the blast furnace operation, very important uh, technology is how this burden moves inside. Because at the bottom, it's a melt and a sink. And then at the top, it keep pouring the, the raw material in. In, in the body, the things are sinking, but not the very uniformly sinking. It's a sliding and gliding, and all of the things happening inside. So it's control of those movement of a burden in the furnace is quite demanding, difficult. So because of that, the, the size of the blast furnace was limited until the people have uh, adopted some technology from civil engineering. In civil engineering, um, they already had a very well-developed technology for landsliding. Okay? So they adopted, the, the metallurgical engineer adopted uh, that the civil engineering uh, technology, landsliding technology, and then applied it into the blast furnace so that they can increase the uh, size of the blast furnace. The other one, uh, in 19, up until 1950s, the, the, most of the steel was, uh, steel was produced uh, by the, the so-called open house furnace. Okay? It's a quite nice, but very slow. But the, even in the more than 100 years ago, the, the, they already knew that the, when, we, uh, when, people, when the pure oxygen could be used for steel making, then the steel, steel can be produced in a much faster way. But the, the oxygen was very expensive. But in 1950s, the, someone developed the, how to produce uh, the oxygen in much cheaper uh, price. It's the so-called the tonnage oxygen. So the, this tonnage oxygen uh, uh, was employed in the steel making, uh, combined with the steel making technology, so that the basic oxygen furnace uh, has been developed. Okay. Now. This is a triangle, not a phase diagram, but anyway, the phase diagram looking at the triangle. So suppose this is a revolutionary furnace, open house furnace, old fashioned, and then basic oxygen furnace here, and then the electric arc furnace there. So you, you, all of you know the, how to read this one. Uh, this is the, the how the steel making technology uh, is moving along with time. For instance, a long time ago, this is the main steel making uh, technologies. But in, if you look at this one, in the 1950s, the uh, BOF, basic oxygen um, steel making technologies, was the, uh, the, the major uh, technologies. But in 1950, in, the, in, in 2000, it's gradually moving toward electric arc furnace because the iron sc steel scrap. Uh, has become more and more available, and then the, the steel making with the scrap tech, uh, steel making technology with the scrap has been developing developed uh, a little bit further, so that they, they are working in this way. So the, someone has predicted that in 2030, the most of the steel will be produced through electric furnace uh, way because more and more. I, the steel scraps would be available. But if I take the Japan as an example, the, the, one of my friends in Japan told me that in 2030, the steel scrap to be collected in Japan is enough to, to cover the steel demand in Japan. Okay? If you process the steel scrap Using the arc furnace, if you don't, don't if you don't worry about the steel quality, but the problem is quality. If you use the steel scrap, inevitably uh, you will have some impurities, which is very difficult to remove. So that the quality quality of steel is not comparable uh, uh, with uh, steel coming from iron ore. 
but the technology has to be developed further. So that uh, very recently, the but new technology has already been available in the market. But uh, some, I think, uh, some Indian steel companies have already adopted this one. So this is a, a, a basic oxygen furnace. This is electric arc furnace. They combine them together so that the one single furnace has two sources. The, by, by putting the oxygen lens, it becomes a BOF, and then take it out, and then they swing the electric, uh, the electrical electric uh, electrode in, and then it becomes a arc furnace. So the one furnace functions to uh, two steel making. Uh, uh, process. So, so in this case, you can co you can use either molten hot metal and then the steel scrap, depending on the, the economic point of view or the quality point of view. Okay. So this is a very simplified uh, st iron steel making uh, process. Suppose we are going to make uh, iron, but if we move this direction is oxidation, move this way reduction. Okay. So iron ore is a fully oxidized form, Fe2O3. So we have to make iron using Fe2O3. And then we have to remove this oxygen from iron oxide. Usually we use carbon. Carbon uh, loves oxygen so that the carbon takes oxygen out and then leaving the iron behind. Then I, we can produce iron. Ideal if, uh, this is very ideal condition. But our technology, current technology, is not good enough to hit this uh, point. So we usually go uh, the, the overshooting like this. We, can pr we produce iron, but contains too much carbon. So this is called iron making, mostly from brass furnace. And then the, it contains uh, too much carbon. We have to remove it. To remove oxygen, we, su we supplied carbon. To remove carbon, we again supply oxygen. Okay? We blow the oxygen. But again, we could remove uh, the carbon, but uh, it contains too much oxygen in it. Now the, we, we, we can't use carbon again, because if we use carbon, we will keep back and forth forever. So the, we have to use some different things, usually aluminum or silicon, and then some other uh, uh, metals, which is very good for uh, reacting with oxygen. Okay, so in many cases we use uh, aluminum. Then it comes to to this one. Th this is called refining process. This is a general uh, uh, process. Okay, and then the once we are you are happy with the, you know, the liquid steel, then it goes to the casting to make a solid. Now. The couple of weeks ago, the Professor Chang Mo Kang uh, uh, gave a lecture uh, very intensively. So the, the, if I reiterate a little bit of it, and then suppose final products is 100% in terms of a production cost, and then the hot metal, to make a hot metal, you have to spend 75% of the total cost. And then the further processing to uh, the steel making and refining, once you got the steel cast, it's already used up the 90% of its total cost. Okay. Further processing, uh, uh, processing, about 10% more cost. Why this happens? Previously, this was not the case. But uh, if you look at the, the raw material price, about 10 years ago in 2000, the price of iron ore was $18 per ton, but now it is $160 per ton. For coal, it is a coking coal. In 2000, it was a $40 per ton, but now it's a, a very close to $300, $300, $300, dollars per ton. So, in 10 years' time, this is the. Uh, how the raw material price uh, have changed. That's why the iron making process is so important these days. So the, some people say that those steel companies, only those steel companies will survive which can develop 
a kind of a technology which, which accept raw quality raw materials because raw quality raw materials are cheaper. So the, there are uh, several uh, alternative, several uh, processes has been developing alternative to blast furnace technology. For instance, FastMet, I don't, I don't like to cover too much in detail. They produce uh, uh, sort of a hot uh, DRI, but, uh, and then the, uh, the rotary hood furnace, this has been developed uh, uh, by Japanese uh, uh, the people. And then the, it is uh, also the, one of the promising uh, technologies, uh, alternative to uh, blast furnace. But they produce a steel iron nugget not this, not the liquid hot metal, but the solid iron nugget. And then this is a Finex. Uh, POSCO is uh, putting lots of effort into it to develop, to, uh, uh, to complete uh, this uh, process. This is just to, uh, uh, to replace the, the blast furnace. Okay, the heat. The Professor Chang Kang has already explained some detail of it. I'll skip it. And then the, for steel production, not the iron production, but for steel production, but the current technology is uh, either a BOF or the electric arc furnace. As I told you, in the future, these two furnaces will be combined together so that you can take iron, uh, metallic iron coming from iron ore, also the metallic iron source coming from steel scrap then the, you can produce any kind of a steel quality, the long product or flat products, whatever. Okay, okay um, this is another view of uh, the whole process of a uh, 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 steel production uh, process. Raw material comes at the room temperature. Iron ore, coal, limestone, all comes the raw te the room temperature. Temperature is raised quite high, and then even further high for steel making. This is a 1,600 degrees Celsius. And then you cool it down to make it solid, and then comes to the room temperature, and then heat it up again for, for hot rolling. This may be about 110, oh, sorry, uh, 1,100 1, 1, or 1,200 degrees Celsius level, and then cool it down again for cold rolling and then further processing. Okay? So heating up and then cooling and then heating up and cooling. Okay? So is there any way to produce uh, the steel without going that high temperature? So this is uh, the, what we do at the CSL, the calcium ferrite route. So when you look at the phase diagram of calcium ferrite, so this is the phase diagram at the 1300 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you, we can see that the very wide uh, liquid area. So the liquid area, if you control the oxygen potential uh, in the right direction, then you can produce uh, metallic iron. Okay. And then the further reducing the, uh, the, the processing temperature, so the, the, we are working on the oxysulfide route. So oxysulfide, when you look at the phase diagram of oxysulfide, a very brief one, this iron side, sulfur side, and oxygen side, there is a two-phase region, region. So if the composition is brought to this area, you can have a metallic iron and then oxysulfide melt together. In other words, oxysulfide melt uh, may be able to precipitate out the metallic iron. So the, I'm particularly interested in this process uh, uh, because in the future, the steel industry should use more of uh, iron steel scrap. Steel scrap inevitably contains copper in it. Copper likes uh, sulfur uh, more the, the, uh, than oxygen. So the, the, when you have a, uh, enough amount of sulfur in steel, the copper can easily combine with sulfur to become a copper sulfide. So remove the copper using it this way, and then the, uh, the steel may contain an uh, excessive amount of sulfur in it. And then the, we have already developed a good technology for desulfurization 
so that we can remove the sulfur. So it's a quite future-oriented uh, one. So we are also working in this uh, area as well. For, for continuous casting, so the, the now that we are actually employing the gravity fall, free fall of liquid steel. The, what, what I mean here is, so up, up, up there we have a ladle, molten steel, falls to the tan dish by opening the hole, and then the, the, the liquid steel falls to the, uh, the mold, also the, the gravity fall. Because of uh, uh, the free fall, the, the liquid steel is agitated, it's very turbulent condition. That turbulence creates lots of problems to the steel quality. Is there any way uh, to replace uh, the, this, uh, the free fall uh, mechanism? So in, G in, in CSL, we are actually uh, developing this technique. So the turn dish is not at the top of the mold. The turn dish is actually beside the mold so that it's connected like this. It's a siphon, siphon uh, process. So in this way, the, the steel can flow from here to there in a much gentler way. So the, we don't have a very minimal turbulence in the mold. Okay, that's the, the, the technology we have, uh, the technologies we are working on in CSL uh, for future-oriented uh, uh, view. Now the, I, I, I change my talk. Uh, uh, what, what are you here for? At Gipt. Why are you here in GIFT? There are many other departments, even at Postel. Why did you select to work at the GIFT? Is it because of a very attractive uh, scholarship package? Or you expect that you, you expect that you can uh, you can find a job? Uh, more easily than the other department? Or do you really have steel in your heart? Which one is the, is the major reason? Scholarship package? Finding a job? If that is the major reason, um, probably the reason I wouldn't be very impress impressed. So the, when you finish your study, either with master's degree or the PhD degree, you will be branded with the mark of steel in your forehead here, <laughs> right? You must be happy with it. Okay. The steel technologies, uh, the, this is uh, the, the, the case of Korea. The, I just take Korea as an example. The steel industry in Korea you, has been f in followers position. In 1960s, 1970s, 80s, 90s, even very close to uh, this point, the Korean steel companies or industry was very faithful follower. Okay. They're working hard and then they, they just benchmark, oh, that is the advanced technology. They worked very hard to follow it, to catch it up. And then the, also the, the Korean steel companies are, were very clever. Probably there will be a number of different technologies available in the market, which one I should follow. Okay. If you follow the wrong one, you will be in big trouble in the future. So the Korean steel companies, steel industry has been very clever in choosing the advanced technology so that uh, they have uh, wrote uh, many of success stories. Look at POSCO, quite uh, a good example there. Suppose uh, the, you have to tackle uh, uh, a, a, a kind of a problem. I don't know what it is. It's, it looks very difficult to solve. And then the, this person doesn't know what to do. But uh, you can think of uh, 
several different ways. This is one way. Oh, there is a solution. So go and hit the button, and then solution comes. You don't care what this means. As long as you have the answer, you are happy. Okay, this is one way you can choose from. And then the, the, when I was uh, the junior engineer in the steel company, we had a lots of problems. When a problem comes up, nobody knows how to tackle it, how to solve it. And then the boss of the company asked the Tokyo, Tokyo office of the company, find a retired foreman, well-skilled. And then he came, and then he told us, oh, this is the way to go, this, that is the way to go. We just follow very faithfully. But we didn't care. We didn't actually know why it happens in that way. What is the reason? Don't worry. Just that he just asked us to switch this way. We did, and it worked. We are happy. He returned back. So very quick and easy. What about the, the, the what if the, the, another problem comes up? No solution. We have to find another retired foreman out there. Okay. Okay. Another way. There is a help button. Just hit it, or just to see it. Sneak uh, the, what the, the other person is doing. Okay, and then you can get a solution. Probably, the, if you are not smart enough, even if you see it, you don't know what it is. So you have to have a little bit of knowledge. Uh, so this is a better than the uh, previous one, but still. If you don't have this person available, then you may not be able to solve the problem. Okay? So also the easy and quick, and then the probably you may not be able to solve the, 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 the another problem when it comes. Okay? Okay. Suppose there is still another way you are thinking, and then you are focusing and concentrating, and then try to, usually, eventually you can put forward a solution. That solution may not work. And then you come back, and then keep going back and forth, and then you eventually get the answer, okay? So slow and steady. But if this is the case, when next problem comes, probably you, may be, you will be able to solve it for yourself. I hope all of uh, GIFT students should work and they try to solve your problem in this way. Okay? Actually, the way you take, the way you take now, actually shapes future you. Okay? Which which path you take? So the, the hopefully all of you take this path, and then we call this kind of person a man of ability, innovative, and then creative type of person. So now the steel, the steel industry in Korea are gradually, has gra gradually moved. Now we are at the leader's position, in some sense. Leaders are usually very lonely. Okay. All of these uh, aged people here sitting in front row, or, or, or row, and then second row and third row as well, and then these people are all standing at the front row in their chosen areas. But they are, they are lonely. They try to, to find a person to follow, but there's a, no, it's a, it's a wilderness out there. So the welcome to the future, but you don't know which way to go, okay? unless you are very nicely and then very well prepared. So you can you know the what the uh, what the history is. So suppose you are standing here. This is the history, and then the very stupid person will project in this way. Okay, the future will go in this way. But that is not the case. Probably you can, the, the, the clever person will, 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 I don't know, do you know what, what it is? 
So, so the, you have to be prepared for the future. So again, the, I'd like to see each one of you to be a man of future still. Not, not like this, not like that, but like this. So the, this is a very famous uh, curve, S-curve. Incubation period, develop period, and then mature period, so that. So this is a time or effort, and then the development, level of development. So if the, you are at this stage, this is the amount of effort you put in, and then this is the effect, achievement. Small input and then large output. If you are at this side, you will be very happy. Small input and the large output. If you apply this to your research, if you are at this stage, quite a, quite a lot of uh, effort in input, but outcome is small, very shallow. Look at the, the when I the the. To use uh, mount climbing, rock climbing, rock climbing as an example. So in this case, for a given length of time, probably you can climb up a little bit uh, to quite uh, quite a distance. But if this is the case, the same amount of effort, probably you can you can progress a little bit. Okay. This is the steel. Okay, the steel. That's why. You should work very, very hard, like a, uh, like a, this person climbing up a rock. Okay. Don't try to be like this. Okay. <laughs> Still is in fighting an uphill battle. Suppose you are, how do you call it, the fencing, fencing. It's, uh, in, in old days in Europe, they, they, f they fought with a very long, narrow, uh, sword, and then if you are up here, then the another person is down here, uh, you are much in better position. Okay? So, but if you are the, the down here, it's, uh, the looking up, uh, you, you will be uh, usually in big trouble. Okay. So the, at least academic arena, the steel is in fighting an uphill battle. Okay? We should admit it. Okay? For instance, when I was a university student, department was called Department of Metallurgical Engineering. Finish. And then, then it changed the Metallurgical Engineering and Material Science. And then the Material Science and Metallurgical Engineering. <laughs> and then the Material Science and Engineering only. And then Advanced Material Science and Engineering. So these are the, the level of steel covered, okay? And then the, in some universities in the North America, for instance, even the, these departments disappeared. And then the, some of them has joined uh, chemical engineering, some others joined the mechanical engineering. In this case, steel is a falling like this, okay? This is the real situation uh, at the university. But steel is the material not to be abandoned, but the material to be reinforced, as I told you, the, the num because of the number of reasons. That's why we have established or founded GIFT, and then all of you are here working for steel. Science and technology, when we apply the science technology to steel, these are the number of atoms uh, you are dealing with. Okay? This is the number of atoms. When you deal with this number of atoms, there is a tangible material, amount of materials. Okay? It's a one more of material. What is the, how, how, uh, how heavy the one more of iron? Anybody can say? Oh, very, very precise. <laughs> very precise. Roughly 56 grams, right? That you can you can you can you can touch and feel. So this is the the one. The, 
and then the microstructure, and then the molecular level, and then ab initio, the first principle kind of a work. So the, if we can cover a very wide uh, the spectrum of uh, technologies for real material here, and then the, sorry, the, and then the, this will be very nice, and then the, the, this is our hope. But in many cases, it's, a, it's discreted. We know something about this area, this and that, but the, we don't know much about this, some other areas. It's a dis disconnected, uh, like uh, uh, this one. Because we have uh, only this depth of knowledge for this area, and then very shallow knowledge, a little bit deeper knowledge in this particular area, something like that. But it is a general, the, the people are generally saying that uh, if your knowledge goes that depth, and then the application of your knowledge will be covering only that, uh, that width, and then the, the coming deeper and deeper and deeper like this. So the, we can say this is the depth of knowledge, and then this is the breadth of applications. It would be very, very ideal if one person or one researcher can cover all of these, the depth and the breadth. But unfortunately, it is not the case. So someone has a very good knowledge in this area. Someone has a, a good knowledge in this area. Someone has a very nice uh, knowledge in this area. But not all of them in, by one person. So this is why we have to do some collaboration and a group work. Some people working in this area and they're saying some, uh, some, uh, some, some, uh, some word. And then the, the people working in this area, initially they are uh, from different, uh, uh, different world, but that they should understand each other and then they combine them together uh, to, put, to, to develop uh, uh, some uh, innovative and creative uh, technology or materials. It's a, this is a technology breakthrough. So the, this is a, the usually S-curve. If this is all, then the, this technology will be saturated here. So now we have a technology breakthrough. Okay? If we have a technology breakthrough, and then we can make a, another takeoff like this, another S-curve. Otherwise, we should be saturated like this. And then the another, another one and the another one. So the, the technology will continue to develop like this. For instance, if I apply this kind of a concept to testing, solidification of a molten steel, so this is a ingot casting and then continuous casting, strip casting, and then some other casting technology, probably siphon casting, which I'm working on. Okay? So this is a, for when the, the ingot casting was the case, most of the people are working on ingot casting, how to prevent the segregation and those things, how to make uh, the inclusions to float up to, before they fully solidify. So that, is a high, that was the high technology at that time. Okay. So ingenuity. So to do this, probably the, you need to have a, some kind of ingenuity. You know the, who said this? Genius? Oops, is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. Who said that? And then what the perspiration? It's a sweat or effort, 99% effort. So do you think you, all of you are genius? Because you, at least you have a 1% inspiration, at least. The remaining 99% effort, you do, you, you, every day you put effort into, into your work. So all of you should be genius, but they don't call you, you genius. Okay. Why? There is another principle called the Pareto principle. Okay. Sometimes it's, it's also known as the 80-20 rule. This principle states that for many events, 
roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. What does it mean? For instance, suppose there is a person, time, energy, and an effort, 100%, he puts 100% of time, energy, and an effort, and then the 20% of his input, either it's time and effort or the effect, or sorry, the energy, 20% of his, his input results in 80% of the uh, achievement. 80% of his time, effort, and, and, and energy just gives a 20% of achievement. So the, you make an achievement, 80% of your achievement comes actually from 20% of your input. The remaining 80% of your input produces only 20% of outcome. Why? Because of this. Okay. When you put 20% 20 of your time, you are very active and then the, the, the very concentrated and focused work. But the, for the 80% of the time, this is uh, what you do. Okay? So you don't focus, you don't put just the, oh, see, I have to do some computer game first, and then, oh, and then I have to do some research. I have to read the paper. Oh, it's a headache. I have to go to the toilet. And then one cup of coffee. So you don't concentrate. I don't know you, but I know my children. Okay. okay. There is another case. How about this? Input. 20% input produces 80% of outcome. Another 20% also 80%. Another 20% 80%. And then the he, 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 he is 100%, this person is a 400%. Okay? When Edison says 99% perspiration, effort, or sweat, he actually probably means this kind of effort, perspiration. Okay? Not, not the effort you are putting, not the sweat or the work um, effort you are putting. Uh, I don't say all of you, but the, some of you must be genius. But I don't say, I, I, I would say not all of you. So the, when Edison says 99% uh, perspiration, then he probably uh, uh, means that, that this kind of effort. Okay? So everybody can do this. This is 80% uh, of the people are actually in this form. This is uh, what we say in Chinese letter, but we know what it means. Okay? Is it the right English? ordinary person. Yeah? And then the GIFT members. Okay? Uh, you, should, you should like this. Okay? This is a bean sprout. This is a bean tree. Okay? Bean sprout and then bean tree. But both of them comes from the, from the same bean. Why it becomes bean sprout and becomes bean trees? It takes a different, different path, okay, different way of going. So, so if you choose, if you really like this one, you have to choose this path, not, not this one. If you choose this one, you will become a bean tree rather than bean sprout. Okay? I don't say that which one is better than the other, but that you have to be determined. Don't just to, to move back and forth like this. Okay? Then probably you will produce some kind of a hybrid sort of a thing. Now the, this may be the, uh, the last one. Uh, the, what are the function and the roles of GIFT? Okay? GIFT is a very unique kind of a unit at the university. So you know that the, uh, Every department has its own graduate program. Material science and engineering department of this university has its own graduate program. Mechanical engineering has its own graduate program. But the, there's still some different type of graduate program like GIFT and then information technology graduate program, a wind energy uh, graduate program. So there are 
I think there are about uh, 10 different, uh, 10 different uh, special programs in this university, which has only graduate program, not the, no undergraduate work. But GIFT is still different from all the other graduate schools. Not all of most of the graduate schools, because this graduate school offers not only the masters, but also the PhD degrees, specializing in steel. So this kind of a uh, graduate school is called, I don't know how to call it in English, but in Korean, we call it Jeonmun Dehawun. How, how do you call it? It's a, do you have that kind of a, a graduate program? In, we do, but uh, don't have a special name. Don't have a special name. Okay, like a, a medical school. Okay, medical school has only graduate program. Law school, only graduate program. A business school, no undergraduate, is a graduate program. GIFT is uh, in the same kind of line in terms of organization or level. So the GIFT has its own unique mission and an aim. Suppose industry production capacity. So the industry, for the, let's take a POSCO as an example. POSCO produces steel, number of different kinds of steel. And then the, the POSCO also has its own R&D capacity. They have owned the R&D research center. Okay? They provide some applied technologies to them. Probably they are not very much interested in the fundamental research because uh, that is not the way the, 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 they should go. Okay? So what they do should be, should, you should find immediate application to the steel production. Now, the GIFT is sitting here so that it's produced some embedded technologies to, to them and then supporting technologies to, to industry R&D. And then also to, it produces a kind of a breakthrough technologies. Okay? And then also, the, very importantly, GIFT should produce high caliber, uh, well-trained manpower, either in master's or a PhD level. So the, the GIFT has to have a very intimate uh, relationship with industry, like a medical school and law school and then the uh, business school. Okay. They have, uh, for instance, medical school has a very close interaction with uh, hospital. Okay. In fact, the, most of the professors at medical school are medical doctors of hospital. Law school, many professors in law school has good experience in the law practice, legal practice out there before becoming uh, law school professors. B business school as well. So they are very uh, close interaction with industry of their own area. So the GIFT should always uh, the, the keep in mind that the, we are uh, our outcome uh, should be useful for the steel industry. Otherwise, the GIFT has no, no, to, ha, cannot find it, it's a foot ground because out there in the in post -tech, there are many departments they have taught their own uh, graduate schools. Uh, I'm sorry that the, the who are not Korean here, it's particularly to Chinese um, uh, students. Uh, this is China. This is uh, the Chinese two letters uh, which Chinese people call themselves. This is a center, and then this is a, um, I don't know how to interpret, prosperity, okay? Center of prosperity of everything. Culture, science, technology, power. So the China has been the center of everything. And then the, there are many, many people living around. So unfortunately, they call all these people a barbarian. Okay? This, this is the Chinese letter to indicate the barbarians living in northern part of China. Okay? Western part, this is a Mongolian. This is a Tibetan. This is a, from Vietnam in that area, southern part of China. 
unfortunately, this letter is used to indicate the Korean. Okay? And then this letter, uh, in China, they use, used to, to say the metal. Okay? So when you combine these two together, metal and Korean, and this is the steel made in Korea. Okay? I'm not joking. This is a really the letter for steel in China, but it's all, they don't use this, uh, this letter these days. If you look up the dictionary, so you can find uh, this one, and then the, it, it would say that this is uh, one of the old letters for steel. Okay? So this try, it seems to indicate that uh, our ancestor in Korea, Korea used to be quite good in steel making. Okay? So, so we should, uh, th those Korean guys should be proud of uh, being uh, students in GIFT. And then all those the students coming who came from other countries, you should be proud of uh, studying in the country which used to be very strong in steel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks so much. I'm very appreciated, rather say, very moved by the, your passion and enthusiasm of the steel. Very thanks so much. Thank you. I think it's a very good chance to not only the research help, how about the GFT life or anything, if you want to say something to build out the GFT, any question, any comment is quite welcome. Oh, you start again? Yeah. Okay, please. <laughs> 